Hello, and welcome to the special Cube Conversation. I'm John Furrier with the Cube. We are in the IBM Cube clone here on the show floor. <laughs> this is a creator set built here by IBM to bring all the influencers and the analysts on board here. Guys, this is uh, uh, a, a similar situation. We've seen this more with our Cube. Of course, let's do our thing. Shelly Kramer, Sarjeet Joel, analyst on the Cube research team. Let's research and look at the data. Let's find out what's going on. <laughs> Shelly, you had a great post on thecuberesearch.net on the I, keynote. I did. Let's get know? into the keynote review. And of course, Rob Thomas, mm -hmm. Dario Gill had the one-on-ones we just had. Let's get into it. What's we have your been take? Drinking at the fire hose of all things IBM Think. You know, Arvind started out his keynote with a statement that AI is a fundamental technology. We know that, right? Um, but he said that current estimates are that AI will add an estimated four trillion to the annual GDP productivity by 2030. Four trillion, one technology. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, and he also said a lot of things about, which I thought was great, that IBM's culture is really driving from a Red Hat perspective. And he says a lot of innovation, but a lot of deployments coming, Sarjeet. Yeah. And then he said, we are going to see an era of application sprawl. He's predicting billions of applications coming in the next 10 years, yep. some mi big number. I don't know if it was billions, but it was large. Yep. It was basically, he's saying app sprawl. So more deployments, which means more production, more enablement applications. What's your, what's your assessment of that? What does that mean? I think that is an ag aggressive number, to be honest with you. The, we have to take care of our legacy as we create new applications. Of course, there'll be a lot of agents. If you call agents applications, actually that his number will be correct, I think, or he will be looking in the ballpark. But uh, creating that many number of applications in the next, you know, six, seven years is, is uh, I, can't, I can't relate to that myself. 600 million. 600 million apps. 600 million to be, at 600 million to a billion being written by the end of this decade. Yeah, that is significant. So let's just, if you believe that to be true, let's just say half the numbers are right, half a billion new apps with generative AI enablement. That means application tsunami is coming, yeah. which we've yeah. talked about in the queue. And we so, okay, what does that, that mean to the underlying infrastructure? More observability, they had the, the automation wheel, Rob Thomas presented that in his session. Yeah. You got observability, you got to figure out what's going on with, with, the, with the cloud safe, models, you got the network aspect of it. Connectivity. The yeah. whole thing is coming together. You got to make that more automated. So all those apps need under the covers technology. What is the secret sauce going to be, guys? I mean, what's the research tell us? I think the form factors might change going forward for, if we talk about sort of universal application sort of portfolio, that, that means consumer applications as well. The glasses will be coming to, to the forefront they will be lighter, you know, not, not <laughs> like what 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 um, Apple has produced right now. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like monolithic, you know, stuff on your head. So with that, we will get a lot more uh, change in hardware. We will be doing more AI on the device, on the edge, as well as we will have better models, better, cheaper, faster models yeah. on the back end. Cloud will flourish with it. I love that, a lot of stuff yeah. on your head, monolithic stuff on your head. <laughs> That's Apple Vision Pro you're referring to. <laughs> yes. Shelly, let's talk about the go-to-market because I, <laughs> on the one-on-ones we just had with Rob, Tom, yep. Zarvin, and, and Dario, we asked them about what was their lead ecosystem play. OpenShift and Watson X are the game changers here. Absolutely. IBM is putting all the wood behind Watson X and OpenShift, which when asked about will they be infusing um, Red Hat and pr to promote IBM products. Sarjeet, you asked that question. Yeah. He went, whoa, stop right there. <laughs> yes. We are not going to touch Red Hat. Shelly, give us your analysis and I want to go you for well, the Red Hat. Well, I think part of it too, separate from Red Hat and that conversation, you know, is the ecosystem that they were talking about and how committed IBM is to developing that partner ecosystem. And, and I think it was Arvind, but it might've been Rob who was just talking about the reality today is strong partnerships and strong alliances, not only benefits the vendors, but it really benefits customers too. So when we look at the ecosystem that was announced here today, it's AWS and IBM and Adobe and Meta and Microsoft and Mistral and Palo Alto. I just covered that the other day. Salesforce, SAP, and then the, the uh, launch of the Saudi Data and Artificial Intelligence Authority. So all of this yeah. demonstrates to me yeah. the commitment to actually making this yeah. work across a broad ecosystem. And what's going to be interesting, Shelley, is to see how they can parlay their 
I will say, successes and failures they've had with Watson and AI in the right. past. IBM's got a deep DNA in data. They know their they know the data business. If they can bring Gen AI to their ecosystem, like they hinted to us about the relationship with Palo Alto Networks. Hey, why be in the threat application business, partner with the platform Palo Alto Networks and bring Gen AI to that while having hybrid open shift under the covers with Red Hat. Sarveep, you asked the question, will they promote products with Red Hat? He said, no, we'll optimize with Red Hat. We have to leave Red Hat alone because so, it's an independent company, quote, independent company. It is not, IBM owns it. So, I mean, a tough thread to, to thread that needle right there. Yeah. It is actually, you have to read uh, between the lines. Uh, his body lang language was telling something else, but his his language was telling something else. That's how I read it. Um, he said, like, no, no, we will not use um, Red Hat to promote our products, but they have started to do that. Actually, we heard that from other senior execs. I will not name the names, because they will get in trouble from our win. <laughs> you name names, we're going to run the IBM uh, <laughs> theater here. No, but I mean, this interesting promoting product, this is a, again, this is a cultural, he's got to be diligent yes. and police this because yeah. if they're pimping, if they're promoting no, IBM product, is that's different than integrating, creating a competitive advantage by having access exactly. to Red Hat yeah. without yeah. touching the core code. Yeah, he said that, he said that we will, we will uh, have the synergies, but we will not promote uh, our products based on using Red Hat. And I, th we have seen this movie earlier. R R VMware was EMC company, and I was at VMware when we wanted to be, it's just pure and EMC wanted to push their storage through us and then we, we, we will buy from HP and they will yell at us. So I see what, what's happening there right now. I can feel it. Dell made a lot of money with VMware. IBM yes. can make a lot of money with Red Hat. Yeah. The goose that laid the golden egg, you don't make a pillow out of the feathers. Yeah. You keep the goose laying the golden <laughs> eggs. Yeah, right? I th I that's think the old expression. We, we, we talked to it last, last night with Dario, right? Um, um, uh, while at the drinks, right? Yes. It, that was an interesting discussion, right? So the, their proximity to developers has to come through the Red Hat, I think, um, because Red Hat has like close, you know, yeah, close nest to developers. Is, I yeah. think this is the Trojan horse I think it's, IBM has with Red Hat because the hybrid play right now is so hot. Everyone's infrastructure decision is hybrid. That's a done deal. We've been calling that for over at least a decade now, but now the past five years, we're seeing that's a steady state hybrid cloud, no problem. Next, next game is open source. CNCF KubeCon is getting boring. Kubernetes has won. <laughs> That's an uh, orchestration layer in the cloud native world. In comes agents and generative AI. You're going to start to see a lot of innovation in the infrastructure software area, which Rob Thomas was talking about. So right. Red Hat will win them new business. Then IBM can bring Watson X and modernize it. So right. the beautiful thing about IBM right now is they're bringing those two together. You do not want to touch this Trojan horse, which is the goose that lays the golden eggs because <laughs> Red Hat is bringing so much value to, to, uh, to IBM yeah. that now you add in HashiCorp with the acquisition, and which by the way, is going to be a nice compliment to Red Hat for day three operations. Day two, day three, so what do yeah, you call it? Two. I mean, it's going to be a good fit for them either way. So right now they're looking good. I mean, middle of the fairway for IBM in terms of where they're positioned. Can they execute? And, and my, my analysis and my critique is, or my challenge is, IBM has not been good at ecosystem. Yeah. They traditionally have been blue oriented, very blue, very, you know, if you're in IBM's world, you get all the M perks. It's an IBM world, you get blue washed if you get bought in. So if their acquisitions can come in and be accretive and not be so much blue IBM, and make that more open and bring in an ecosystem where there's a real value proposition right. that isn't services based or competitive. So if IBM could share the pie, as Arvind said on this partner keynote, then I think you're going to see a massive success because they have to share the wealth. Right. If they do that, they're going to attract partners and they're right. going to have the products too to boot. Well, and I think that's what we're seeing though yeah. with this, these ecosystem announcements and these major players in the, in the tech space. And you know, I wanted to touch on briefly the announcement around IBM Concert, which I think is a big deal. And we touched on this just a minute ago when we were talking about this app sprawl and complexity and every conversation, John, that we have with anybody, whether it's a vendor side or whether it's a customer, complexity is a killer. Yeah, yeah. And so everybody's trying to get arms around that. And so that's really what IBM Concert does. It's yeah. to help manage around controlling operations, reducing and mitigating risk, um, managing compliance with Gen AI, which of course Watson X is amazing at. Um, so anyway, I think that we're, I, I think that 
what concert can do is generating analyses, visualization, recommendations that help speed actions, discover gaps, reduce complexity, all of these things that customers desperately want. So I think that was a really interesting announcement. Yeah, I think, I think the developer angle is big too. Yeah. yeah, I think open sourcing of the models is very uh, interesting. How Dario describes that how the enterprise data will be married with the yeah. models. Yeah. Uh, so that is interesting value prop. It's very clear actually uh, uh, value prop if somebody listens to that pitch yeah. and it makes sense. Right. Right, so that's, that's another thing. So, and then the ecosystem. Right. Like I was impressed when, or when, like in one breath he listed seven uh, of his biggest partners, that's yeah. AWS, Azure, SAP, Oracle, yeah. and Salesforce, Adobe, and Palo Alto uh, networks, right? Yeah, I mean, so they're, 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 gonna, they're, betting, they're, they're being in Switzerland, they're going to try yes. and unify the network to layer and the, the three layer, middleware of the stack. I think, right. I think it's a middleware play for IBM. They know that market. Yeah. And I think Dario Gill, you mentioned Dario, just for the folks watching, Dario Gill is heads up for IBM research. He also pointed out something I thought was instructive to us is that the LLMs are large language models and foundation models, they're very large, he showed how big they are. And he made a point that there's not a lot of enterprise data in those models. But he also then, then conflated that with what I think is reality is that the enterprise could be that big too. Yeah. So I think what he's pointing out is that the enterprise will have a lar their own large language model. Yes. So his point was technology and the mechanisms are there for enterprises to have as big of a model as say an open AI, uh, a 20 billion, uh, 20 gig um, type model. So he's like, the mechanism's there, what will be the model? That's the big question mark. We don't yet know that, but he's right. saying that's coming. So he's yeah. basically saying there's a lot of headroom, right. it's a real deal, so it's a real wave there's a lot for the of, enterprise. There's a lot of experimentation going on, right? Right now is not the time where you can be prescriptive. I warn IBM not to be prescriptive, but just be experimental, yeah. right? So it's like, right now, AI is over-the-counter medicine. It's not, you know, you go to a doctor and they prescribe you, yeah. like, oh, you do this. And uh, actually, I, I raised that, that issue, it's like, you cannot use data as a generic term for enterprise. There's different types of data. There's, you know, like logs, there's uh, your taxonomy of your products, um, if you're healthcare, you know, that doesn't change that much, but your transactional data changes. So the, so you need like five, six tiers of data, like based upon how, what's the frequency of change, yeah. and then decide where that data should be. It should you, should you do use yeah. RAG, or you should use other mechanisms to infuse the data into the models. Right. Arvind was talking about a lot about how the digital computing's there, the data's early days. I want to ask you guys a question. Um, how, is, how is the generative AI wave impacting IBM's business? Um, and we, 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 it's almost like they, they were so excited to do quantum, and yeah. then in comes Gen of AI, <laughs> I have to stop that. Not the momentum, but right. certainly the press and all the hype is Gen AI, rightfully so. How is Gen AI impacted? It certainly it puts quantum in the back seat. But Not for long. Not for long. What's your take on what their impact is for Gen AI? Well, I think they're, I think they're making a considerable impact. I think that, you know, we've talked about this a lot before, and I think the challenge for IBM is an image standpoint, is an image issue, okay? And whether we're talking about Gen AI or we're talking about security, IBM doesn't immediately come to mind as a killer player in this space. And so I think what IBM is laying down here is that, you know what, we are. And here's our you know, long-term strategy, and here's what we're, what we're doing for developers, and here's what we're doing for simplification for customers and, and things like that. So I feel like they're making some significant inroads. What do you think? What's the, what's the impact? I, I, I think uh, impact was big, but like was going to be big, but they are, they, they are recovering from that sort of gap, if you will. They quickly, uh, figured out that if we open source our models, we can get traction out there. And Erwin, right. uh, they, he described that, that sort of um, thinking, yeah. why they did it this way. So I think they, they will do uh, pretty good, but, but having said that, they are B2B focused. I mean, there's no B2C component like right. you know Oracle has mixed yeah. up yeah. stuff, and uh, Microsoft has their sort of um, so uh, productivity software. You know, you I think Gen AI has impacted the company in many ways. I'll yeah. tell you that the Instruct Lab story, how that came about, is yeah. really a big deal. And I think I, well, that to me is the game changer. That could be the next Linux operating system for AI. 
If you look at how models interact with each other, and Arvin was running away you, from that you word. Asked, you asked. I asked him specifically <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> yes. Are you building an operate? Will, is, yeah. will there be an operating system for AI and and hinting, will you be it? He he immediately was said yes, distributed computing. But I wouldn't call it an operating system. <laughs> call it operating workflow. Yes. Yeah, or because yeah. look, we're operating environment, operating system. I mean, it's technically he's a nerd, so he's parsing it as a definition, but right. IBM has an opportunity with Red Hat to yeah. be the operating environment with OpenShift and Red Hat at the bottom of the stack and then use Watson X as a unifier, uh, as infrastructure software middle layer, and then use the Gen AI goodness at the top of the stack. Rob Thomas said, we're an infrastructure software company. Yes. Now, I find that ironic since they're partnering with all the biggest infrastructure players like Amazon, right. Web Services, Azure, but I think what he means is we'll have this stuff under the covers for our own storage, but yeah. we'll partner with whatever infrastructure hardware, quote, is out there, whether it's an AI PC or an AI server or a cluster. We'll, we want to own the orchestration layer and then own the middleware. IBM wants to own the middleware of this next wave. I think that's very clear to me and we're going to dig this into our research. But yeah. I, I think when Rob said that we, we don't have the multi-cloud CMDB, I have been saying that for the last you know, seven, eight years. <laughs> that we, I mean, to do the multi-cloud right, we need the multi-cloud CMDB. But the problem with having a CMDB in cloud is the, the, the infrastructure is so fluid that you can't pin that I have this infrastructure in my environment right now because we have a serverless in there now, right? We have VMs, we have containers, and all these, di these different flavors, yeah. and they fluctuate with, with time and loads. And so doing a multi-cloud CMDB is, is um, a aud audacious goal. And CMDB he said we want to do this. CMDB is the configuration yeah, database this. for all it's those It's older, older well, my th concept. Our little lab visit here on the floor with research teams shows that the game's going to be about metadata. Yeah. You can't make large scale data addressable everywhere. So I think the game will be in metadata. We're already doing this on the Cube research with separating time, compute right? from data. We've got that going on as our sixth data platform, a key research at the Cube research. But when you start thinking metadata, think pointers in C. Yes. Okay, think spreading yeah. pointers all around the network to point to data sets. I think you're going to start to see th synthetic data fill in that gap. We don't know, but we're speculating, as we always do here on theCUBE, <laughs> special appearance. <laughs> Sarjeet, Shelly. Great to be here. Great session, we're here at the IBM Creator Lounge. This is theCUBE, special celebrity appearance in the <laughs> IBM booth. <laughs> I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. <laughs>